except for these battered grays. White Lightning here is the only gamecock I've got left. I haven't fought him yet, but just about everything I've ever learned about breeding has gone into this one. And when the time comes, he'll outcut and outshuffle every gamecock in the South. If a cock's legs hang down in perfect alignment with his body, he's a close hitter. This cock's legs were perfect. What you are about to see is illegal in 47 states. I'll take 25 to 30. I'll take it. You're on. I'll 25 to 30. 25 to 30 on the red. I'll lay 30 to 20. 25 to 30 there. Anybody got it? Oh, you got it. 50 to 30. On the black. I got the black crystal. You want to know something, boy? I am the finest trainer and conditioner in the whole world. All right, let's go. Cockfighting, the dirtiest sport in the world. Get ready. Be it. Now watch your face. No pity, no love, nothing. Oh, well, hey, listen, Mr. Mansfield, I'm sorry. You know, I, I didn't bring no cash with me. I was so sure I was going to win and everything. But listen, I got some money at home. I got a lot of it. I'm going to bring it back as soon as I get home. Mansfield, professional, with a passion for violence. I want to I get married and have children. The drive. The drive in it is to be the best. I like to call it sharpness. Not since the hustler has the violent underbelly of the gambling world been so nakedly exposed. What kind of a man who risks everything in America's most controversial blood sport? The kind who will do anything to win. It's the desire to win. I'm not going to wait for you forever. Winning is the name of the game. This is stick up. Hands over your heads. Anybody who moves gets a head blasted up. Blam! And he knocks off the young rooster. And he says, damn it. That's the third faggot rooster I had this week. <laughs> I got the finest five-pound chicken alive, Jack. Right here in my hands, the very finest. I think that bird has more of a heart than you ever will have. Anything that can fight to the death and not utter a sound, well, winning is the name of the game. Warren Oates. Rated R. Hello, folks. This is a special episode of Cinnamon Beef where you normally get these on the Patreon, but I'm going to give this gun to you guys for free because you haven't heard from me since October. So, yeah, this is your host of Cinnamon Beef, one of them, Gary Hill. Uh, Iris and Suzanne are not here tonight, so I call upon my brother to, to supposedly test out some new equipment, but it, that didn't work out, so we're doing it the old fashioned way. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Cameron Scott is here. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. It's been a long time since we've done this. I'm uh, I'm anxious to get rec- you know talking about this one. Yeah, man. I'm uh, I'm excited too. It was it's a very different movie, and I'm uh, excited to talk about it. And I wasn't cool. even aware it was like available like anywhere until you brought it to my attention. I'm just like, that's like streaming somewhere. Yeah, Holy it, shit! It's a pretty goddamn clear copy too for what it is. You know. Uh, yeah. We're talking about Cockfighter from 1974. Uh, also known as Born to Kill, Gambling Man, or Wild Drifter. Um, this is a film directed by Monty Hellman, who made some pretty reputable stuff. Um, T- Two Lane Blacktop is what comes to mind as probably like his banner film, a uh, real counterculture car movie, um, starring James Taylor, of all people, in that movie. Yeah. And um, he made some, some westerns uh, with, with Jack Nicholson, and uh, he was one of the directors on The Terror there's like five or six directors that directed The Terror. He was one of those workhorse directors that worked on The Terror, Roger Corman's film. And um, most notably to, to horror fans, because they just bought this box set from Vestron, uh, he directed um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, Better Watch Out. Uh, <laughs> the, the one where Bill Mosley has the brain inside of a, 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 a salad bowl on top of his head. Um, very strange movie. 
I think it's underrated myself because there's a lot going on that you have to like uh, ask a lot of questions about, but it's it's still there. Um, and people might might have seen his name uh, much later in um, the early '90s because he exec- executive produced Reservoir Dogs for uh, Quentin Tarantino, and um, that's probably probably the thing he's most known for. If, if I had to be, he's most known, but not known for. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like known for helping bring it out, but like you know, you know, never hear his name is synonymous with the movie itself. He's somebody Quentin talks about, I think, uh, quite a bit, though. So I, um, th- that gives him some exposure, which is fine if you like that sort of thing, you know. But uh, back to the, the the film, a Hancock fighter, uh, stars Warren Oates, Harry Dean Stanton, Laurie Bird, a young Ed Bakley Jr., a young Steve Railsback sticking his finger in the holiest of holies. But not in, well, not in what you think, people. We'll talk about that in a little while. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot talk about this movie without talking about that pretty in depth. Uh, this is also no pun fe- intended. Yeah, this also features Troy Donahue. Um, there's some fun stuff in here, and, it, and it's not really a fun subject matter because the film Cockfighter is just what it is. This is about a mute guy who, whose business is fighting roosters, and he, he uh, his prize when he gets killed, he has to go find one. One of his main rivals is Harry Dean Stanton. They're all fucking sleazy. In Even the females are fucking yeah. sleazy movie. And um, Oh, yeah. They're all, like, greasy, sleazy, dirty, nasty people. <laughs> uh, the poster I'm looking at right now says, From governor's mansions to cheap hotels, the, money's, the mo- big money sport that's dirty, violent, and outside the law. His game is winning. His game, his game is, is, is men, it says here? Wow, okay. Oh, no, her game is men. Oh, her game is men. Um, <laughs> which is very, very small. There's no woman on the poster for some reason. It's like, yeah, he's into it, but he's not into it. Because the film starts with him lo- losing to a Harry Dean Stanton in, in, in the cockfight and betting his trailer and apparently his woman uh, in the bed as well because... Yeah, he, he lost the car, he lost, like, the, the 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 rooster, he lost the trailer, he lost the woman, he had nothing but, like, the cage and his suitcase. Yeah, it's a real strange situation because you could tell that he... This woman was just kind of kind of rolling with him. He really didn't love her, so he's like, you know what, you could have her too. And she was fine with this, which is fucked up, you know. <laughs> yeah, as soon as she realized that she had a place to live, she was just like, wait a minute, where am I going to live? Oh, I can still live here? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll, just... I, I'll lay with the 1974 Harry Dean Stan. Why not? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry Dean Stan, he's sleazy gold in this. When he first appears in that white suit, like, oh, you know, this guy's going to be a slick Rick. Well, it's, 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 it's a white-suited southern gentleman, so, so you know, you know he's up to no good, you know. <laughs> right, right. I think the poster for for Born to Kill for this film was hilarious because it's it, it's this woman driving this car and Warren Oates wielding this axe because there's a point in the film where he does wield the axe but he doesn't hurt anybody with it he's just like okay I'm gonna put this axe on the ground so don't don't go by the poster for Born to Kill because it's got nothing to do with this movie at all really right and there's the alternate one that is just like puzzle pieces you know it says Warren Oates Born to Kill and just love. Courage, <laughs> manhood, and heart, and like that—that—that that, that, those are not things in this movie. Well, he's a complicated dude because he—he's a mute. He, he took a vow of silence for some reason. I think this is in the book why he takes the vow of silence. But so all you hear is Warren Oates' inner monologue, uh, t- talking about like you know, he—he—he uh, he, he knows the bone structure of the of the rooster because all he cares about is these fucking roosters. Of course, this is his business. Yeah, uh, he knows the bone structure. He knows the the way they move. But he can't quite look into the bird's soul to, to tell him what to do. It's almost like he's in love with this bird, at, uh, in, in a way, but, uh, but more more subconsciously, I guess. I, I should really ask you, um, what what is your uh, thoughts on this film in general, sir? Uh, to be honest, okay, it, it's uh, both a blessing and a gift, you know, that this movie was ever made. But it's also. Uh, it's kind of a blessing that movies like don't get made like this anymore just for the animal cruelty alone. I found it very, very hard to watch. It's a, it's a wonderful character study. It's a, a in-depth character study of War Oates as Frank. But, you know, I mean, he's pulling to Willy's Wonderland back in 1974 by not saying anything except for, you know, like, we'll spoil this, but he says one line at the end of the movie. But, yeah, um, 
I'm going to be honest. I, I love this film and hated it at the same time, if that makes any sense. It's kind of like a cannibal holocaust for me. It's like it's not something that I need to have in my collection. Like if it came out on DVD or, or Blu-ray, I would probably not own it. But I'm still glad that I got to see it because I heard about it for years and just, you know, just never seen it because I don't dig on animal cruelty at all. I'm a softie that way. But when you mentioned it, I'm like, all right, picking a controversial one. Fuck it. I'll go for it. But uh, yeah, I'm great movie, but not for the faint of heart, man. They they do some pretty nasty things to animals in this movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you with the, you know, loving it and hating it because, I mean, you watch this film and like like you said, great character studies of some real fucking sleazebags. Down, down to the farmers, down to the hustler, down to the the senator with, with, with the, is the senator the guy with the big old push brew mustache at the end? Is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. He, I think that was the senator, yeah. The, the senator's got a mustache like Frank and, Franklin D. Roosevelt and um, he's running this cockfight in, 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 uh, uh, at his estate. Of all places, so his, his goal of goals, Warnos, is to win, 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 till he gets here and, and gets this this uh, I, I forget like best cockfighter, uh, you know, the cockfighter of the year award or something. Yeah, and, yeah like co- 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 I will say cockhunter. <laughs> yeah. cockhunter. Cockhunter of the year award, man. Cockhunter of the year, cockfighter of the year award. You know, like. Like, uh, uh, is that something that people actually aspire for? Or at least maybe they did back in the day. Uh, but uh. This is something he covets, apparently, because his his, his rival, uh, good, good old, um, what was his name in the movie? Here we go. Jack, uh, Jack Burke has one, and he keeps flashing. I'm like, well, uh, you'll never have one of these. Well, well, let me prove you wrong on that one. And boy, how do he does, because... There's a moment of clarity in this movie, and, and when, when uh, I'll, I'll say this first, though, before I start talking about that, um, you mentioned the animal cruelty part of the of the thing, and it is a big part of the equation, unfortunately, because you see, and this is a warning for those who want to watch this, uh, it's on Tubi, a, a very clear copy is on Tubi. Um, you see real chicken on chicken fights in this movie, and it's very up close and very very visceral in in parts. You see cruelty to animals in the way that they're literally sharpening their claws and you know uh, um, altering their beaks to 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 cheat. So they're they're yeah. t- tying their their talons together to make them s- stay where they want them to stay. And it, it's 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 all bad. It's it's kind of like a bull when they prepare a bull to fight. They're, they're literally wounding the bull to where he's about half capacity before the bullfight even sees the bull. And he's hurting him even more. This reminds me a lot of that. Why we never went to a bullfight. Never been a cockfight or a dogfight either. Um, because the, the terrible abuse that, that it has entailed in this. And this it's entailed in this movie, unfortunately. This is why you probably never saw a real release of it. Um, but again, you, you're, you're in it in, in a very strange way. Because these people are so sleazy. And Warren Oates is, is, is Frank Mansfield is looking for some kind of redemption or something with this woman that he barely knows because right. the line that he says at the end is, is you know, oh, she loves me. After she basically says, you're, you're a big old piece of shit and now I know why you never wanted me to see you do this because you're a fucking animal. And, um, and let's, let's not gloss over the fact that he hands her – a chicken's head that just like won the fight for him that died yeah. and he like and he steps on it and pulls his head off with his foot just like wrenches it right off and i, I was just like whoa like that's dark nasty shit man. dark and he's like she loves me. i'm pretty sure warren oates killed a couple of them chickens oh yeah i'm pretty sure he did now i'm not i'm not, I'm not a crazy vegan people i eat chicken probably twice a week i know i know where chickens come from and it's not from a happy place but you know you don't want to watch it on your screen, as far as like yeah. these, these guys and these these you know hillbillies screaming at the, in the crowd at them, and you know get them red, get them, get them, get them. And this is this is stuff that happens in this movie. But you, you're 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 so deep into these characters, and it, it, it's it even mm-hmm. down to a, a hillbilly Ed Bagley Jr. who who apparently loved his rooster so much that. Uh, yeah, when he when he lost, he was gonna kill Frank uh, with an axe. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, he was gonna. To- I mean, he totally took out the took a swing at him through the window of that car. I mean, you know, Ed Begley Jr. for the win with that with that one. I mean, he was. Uh, I mean, again, you know, it, it's it's some weird characters. I mean, from Steel Steve Railsback, who 
you know, we got to talk about that part at least at some point. Yes. Uh, this junior, I mean, he's a, all these people are certifiably insane. Like, especially uh, Ed Begley Jr., you know what I mean? Like, his rooster just lost. That's it. He, he lost him, but he loved them so much, you know, as his papa was telling him, it's like, well, you know, you should, you know, he's drowning him. Warren Rose is drowning him in a trough. And he's like, I wouldn't hold him down there too long. You might drown him. And he just kind of looks at him. And, of course, you know, Warren Oates, you know, bow of silence, not going to say anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange that that scene in the Steve Railsback scene you're mentioning, we get a very young character named, named Junior who, um, I guess that to give his, his bird a little more pluck, sticks his fingers up its hindquarters or his thumb or something, or some, some, some form of finger and, uh, uh, find pleasure in this? Maybe, maybe uh, Ed Bailey Jr. found pleasure in uh, pleasuring his, his cock, perhaps. Uh, cock on cock action. I don't want to think about these things. <laughs> but, um, no, neither do I. It's a weird, it's a weird sense of, you know, what, what happens in this movie. And that's one of those strange things that happen in this movie. Like, how do I get this fucking rooster going? I'm going to stick my finger up its ass. And this is mentioned in this movie. And, uh, yeah, well, they they break it down to the point that they're like, oh, you got that sharpened thumbnail, blah, 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 that's it, you're, you're out, you're banned from this circuit, and so is your pappy. Because he says, oh, my father taught me how to the, do that. He said, that's something you're supposed to do to get him extra pluck. And I'm like, but no, no, you're cheating. <laughs> like, what, really? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and possibly a sociopath, I don't know, man, you know? It's a weird... Yeah, most uncomfortable scene I think I've I've seen in a movie ever. I was just like, I had to pause it at that point and walk away from it. I'm like, I got, I got to regroup. I got to re, re, regain myself. I got to talk about the girl. Uh, Do- Dodie is, is, is her name in this movie. And this is the girl that, that uh, Warren Oates uh, ditches and Harry Dean Stanton makes his wife in, in this movie. Uh, late, later on, you find out there is a scene, and this is a woman who's, I guess, lost everything. Where they're getting robbed in a hotel room, uh, all these cockfighting people, because they're all gonna, they're all there for the senator's big, big tournament, and um, they all drop trow, and old girl just pulls her panties down, takes them off right there too, like like that's something you're supposed to do, and this is uh, until the end, you know, where she stands up to good old Fr- Frank there, who thinks he, he's got he's got something going, but not really. Uh, right. I, I thought she was just nothing. Like, yeah, she's just a, a thing for men. You know, come on now. <laughs> well, he does her dirty at, at the end there. He's just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm leaving you here. You're you're now his. Like, like he just leaves her laying in the fucking dirt. Like, he does her way dirty. Very dirty. I do like the flashback. With the, they show how he lost everything mm-hmm. at that point. You know, and it's just like, oh, so who really was this a loudmouth blowhard? You know that was just drunk and and stupid and lost lost everything on a fucking you know betting his prize rooster the day before the big fight and it's like well and I I really feel like this movie did deserve one thing it deserved a lot more Harry Dean Stanton like yeah. he is just gold in this he's gold in everything but you know I digress he's good and sleazy and in, in lots of things and there's no exception here I guess um, yeah <laughs> a couple cool things I'll mention uh, this film. Uh, cost four hundred thousand dollars to make. This is the Roger Corman joint, of course. Um, early New World stuff. So, and um, edited by Lewis Teague, who this sounds familiar. He directed stuff like Alligator, and Cat's Eye, and Cujo, and um, nope. s- stuff you know. He was the early editor on this movie, so that that's a that's something impressive. Um, the writer of the book Cockfighter, Charles Williford, um, adapted this this movie from from his book. And um, there are uh, some some little changes in the movie. Uh, he, uh, the author, this is really this is really bold here. The author indicated the cockfighter is based loosely on the structure of the Odyssey. Um, I don't <laughs> I don't see that so much, but you, you could have. That. Uh, I, I don't either. <laughs> oh my god. We'll let them we'll let them have that one, but yeah, like I don't see it. If they want to see it, but yeah, not me. <laughs> Uh, this removed some plot points to where he uh, had a short-lived music career, because why, why not? Um, what else we got going on here? Well, in the in the writer though, the one bit of trivia, he plays uh, Middleton. Oh, okay. the guy with the he plays the guy with the that big you know dead poodle of a mustache on his face. Oh yeah, that guy's uh, <laughs> that mustache is a banger though. I give him that. It's, it's like a it's like a highlight of the movie for me. If I could, if I grow a push <laughs> like that, I would shave off my whole beard, guys. I'll tell you right now. 
That's pretty <laughs> right on. Yeah, yeah, it's magnificent. Oh, let me see. Uh, the film struggled to find an audience. No shit. And Roger Corman said it was the only movie he had backed in the 70s that lost money. He had it recut and re-released under the title Born to Kill, but did not succeed. I don't know what version we watched. I'd imagine we watched a full-on uh, murder version because these chickens were losing their fucking minds. Um, yeah, uh, there are subtle details. Also, change, change, sorry, oh, change the movie, sorry. Uh, which of most are, is insignificant to the plot. For example, it besides the book that Icky... Icky is a rare blue chicken, whereas in the movie is a white chicken called White Lightning. Mansfield Farm is in Ocala, Florida, in the book, uh, and here it's in Decatur, Georgia. A well, little, it's still in the South. You're still, you're still rich in the South. And this would only happen yeah. in the South and in the '70s. Although I'm sure it happens in many other places. Uh, cockfights now. Again, I've never been to one. I don't care to go to one. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, I've, 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 I don't I've care. I to see I my dead chickens in KFC. I, I don't care what country you're in. Okay, I, I don't. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. For for the most part, I I enjoyed the narrative of this movie. It's just the animal violence was a little too much, and uh, and it might be a little too much for you. But if you would like to watch Cockfighter. Don't don't go to Amazon Prime for it because it is on there. But it is a much much worse copy than the one on Tubi, which you know surprisingly could be a treasure trove of films that you don't think prints exist, but they have like HD prints on there or stuff that you think didn't exist. And um, yes, yeah, so go go dig on Tubi. Don't pay to watch it. You can churn it off anytime you want to, and not feel guilty about not paying for it because um, it's it's not for the for the faint of heart in in the in the animal violence sense. Any uh, final thoughts? Anything else you like to say about Cockfighter, sir? Well, I, I think it's something that everybody should watch. You know, we're, I'm not advocating the animal violence, and it definitely not. And, but everybody should watch it once, even if it makes you uncomfortable, because it is a, a fucking a deep and dark character study. I, I mean, I not that I, I under I think I understand the entire trip that Warren Oates' character Frank was on, but like I guess I do. I just uh, don't. I, I I see it. I just don't agree with it. But <laughs> but uh, you know, especially when you listen to the voiceovers, he's you know, Warren Oates has got such a great gravelly voice, but it's so cold and lifeless when he's doing that voiceover. It's just like he's so matter of fact. He's like, this is just what I got to do, and I'm willing to do anything it takes to you know meet my goal. And you kind of have to be disgusted and and admire it all in the same breath. But uh, I, I think the thing I walk away from this is with a much better understanding of cockfighting because, you know, I, I know that it happens. I know dogfighting goes on. But, you know, I don't know m much much about the gist of it and how things work. But, I, you know, I found it interesting in that aspect. You know, I learned a little bit of something. And, hey, I got to admit, I was not prepared to see Robert Earl Jones in here, James Earl Jones' his father, Mr. Sleepaway Camp Chef himself. I was not prepared to see him in this. So uh, I give it a thumbs up for that. Um, are we doing ratings yet? or? Um, I, I'll say a couple more know. things. There, there's a couple of things in here that they were word fails, I think. They try to give you a little piece of his, of his backstory when – I guess he goes back to the home that he owns, and somebody, oh, that's uncomfortable. Somebody took his wife or something. I'm not quite sure. It's probably more elaborated, better in the book, but it, it really does. It really that's really the only real weak part about the movie for you. But as far as the animal violence goes, you can just do you can just do what I did. <clears throat> Whenever you hear loud clucking are coming, just look at your phone till it's done. That, that's I kind I, I kind of did that. I kind of <laughs> did that. <laughs> it's it's a it's a great movie. It really is. Except for that, except for that, and you know they they didn't really need to lean in on that. So he, you failed on that for me, Monty Hellman, and, and, and I understand this is what they were doing. These are these are not good men, none of them. And um, he shows it in the end when the girl is just disgusted by this the display he just saw, and him handed her a severed head of a chicken that he ripped off, and. Like, yeah, it'll be, yep, she's still in the be. It's like, yeah, you're just a chauvinistic male douchebag there, there, buddy. And you just keep keep on keeping on. Yeah, so, keep doing you, but, you know, uh, yeah, you you didn't win. You didn't win. You, the, the wrong animal died, I think. So you're, you're, you're not rooting for him. But in the end, Harry Dean Stanton, you know, when they want, oh, what do they call the different rounds? Did they call them cuts or something? Oh, the cuts and then there's the derbies something yeah it, it, there, there's a point to, to where they're they're two roosters are fighting 
and Warren Oates Rooster wins because he kills he kills Harry Dean Stanton's rooster, and the, the well they thing... both they both roosters die. It's just that his that Harry Dean Stanton's rooster happened to die two seconds before you know Warren Oates. Yeah, but the the, the, the our senator our, our dickhead uh, basically says, "Hey, you got two more rounds you could do." But instead of saying, okay, I will throw my dead bird out there for, for prosperity, Harry Dean Stanton all of a sudden had a, a respect for his animal and picks him up and says, no, my rooster's already dead. I'm going to walk away from this. And, and Perry to uh, Frank there, Warren Oates. And I, I, in, in the end, I, I, I kind of respect him in that sense that, you know, he had, I can see that he had some sort of love for this creature that he, that he led to a slaughter basically. And, um, I, I, I have to respect that about, about 40%. I, I don't know. I don't agree with his intentions with this animal, but the fact that he felt sympathy for this animal to say, you know what, I'm not going to ridicule or do, 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 deface this creature any more than I already have. I'm, I'm walking away. Uh, Harry Dean Stanton, MVP of, of yeah. the end of this movie, sir. Joke. <laughs> I feel like he had a better ca- character story arc than War Notes did. Like in the end, Harry Dean Stanton learned more about <laughs> life uh, th- than War Notes did uh, by the time this movie was really over. It's very true. I mean, I, I had to mention that because it's a very important scene in the movie, in my opinion. Because oh yeah, there, there's not much redemption in there without the last four minutes of this movie to where he does that. And the, the lady tells him where tells uh Frank where to go because he brought her a <laughs> severed head as a gift. And she says, she knows now why she doesn't watch what he does. And by the way, fucking bye Felicia could go have fun somewhere else, you know, cause he, cause he ain't going to give up that life. He's, he's got, He's got nine cocks in his stead, all ready to go, man. He he ain't gonna give up that life at all. He he's uh, he's on a hot streak, and he ain't gonna slow down for that woman. Nope, nope. He ain't gonna give up the the lifer. It's just like a gambler. It's like a gambler's mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're not gonna get go on the straight and narrow for anybody unless they want it, and he didn't want it. It's like the end of rounders. You know, the the the, the final showdown between um, Teddy KGB and Matt Damon. You know. The way he suckered a man, like, by the way, you're actually 30 grand in me still. He could have walked away with his money, but he stayed in. He could have lost all that, too. But, um, I just, uh, the, the end of this movie, uh, yeah, that's the only real redemption of this movie, is the very end. And the fact that he let Ed Bailey Jr. live. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, he got a little bit in there, but not a lot of it. So, Frank's kind of a dick, people. I'm just letting you know yeah. right now. It just, it's, he'll, kill the ch- he'll kill the chicken and rip its head off, but, you know, Ed Bailey Jr. comes out at him with an axe, and he's just like, I'm just going to hold his head under this trough of nasty, mossy water for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll learn his lesson, right? Yeah. I'm sure he'll be a good boy after that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll give ratings now. This is going to be... I need to think about what I'm going to rate this movie. I'll, I'll go to you first, Cameron. Um, 1 to 10, this is going to be a hard sell to, to many people. What do you give it, though, sir? i got to be honest. I'm, I'm going to kind of lean into two numbers here. I'm going to give you the, the the number that I give the film as a whole. I give it a 7 because it is a well-made movie, and I think it does tell a really great story. It It's just about a bunch of unredeemable bastards. If it didn't have... The animal cruelty, if it was, you know, made modern day, let's say, and done, you know, dare I say, with special effects and CGI and with no animal cruelty on screen, I'd probably give it an eight and a half or a nine. But as it stands, because of that, I got to give it a seven. I, I, I think I think it's a hard watch for anybody. It's it's not going to be an easy watch for any general movie goer. Uh, but I still think people should see it. It's just like it's again. I compare it to like Cannibal Holocaust. It's like yeah, there's some questionable stuff in that as well. But everybody owes it to themselves that they are a movie connoisseur to see this at least once. So I'll, I'll leave it at that seven. This will be like that the, the movie uh, A Dog's Journey, where the dog dies and is reincarnated in many dogs. Uh, today's movie would be a cock's journey, and uh, <laughs> the, the cock would die and just keep being resurrected and. You know, fought for, and then, you know, he goes on a wonderful adventure on the road when he escapes his captor, and um, that that's your, your ploy for for woke cockfighter. But as far as regular cockfighter goes, I'm gonna, um, I'm right there with that seven, and I, I'm, I'm saving seven in general. Um, seven and a half, maybe? I'll give it a seven and a half, because okay. I think it's very watchable, 
as far as the film goes. But like you said, that that they, they were a little overboard with the, with the, the the way they filmed the the fights. I mean, they could they could have they could have broke, but the, even in the, the last fight, you see you see uh, Frank's cock just going at it, man, and you see him crack into the uh, Harry Dean Stanton's um, rooster's neck, and you see the blood go on the white shoe. I was like, this just it's a little too much. Okay, okay, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a lot too much. <laughs> so somebody somebody really? else could have cut away and then seen the blood on the shoe. Then you know your your points across right there. Once you see the blood on the shoe, you know if you made the right cut. And I know Monty Hellman can make a film. I've seen Two Lane Blacktop. It's a wonderful film. And oh yeah, he, he he could have cut away from that a little bit, and then you saw the blood on the shoe, and then you would have known right there that that Frank's Frank's rooster got the better of the other rooster. Without showing everything, you know, without showing yeah. you know, him taking the spike out, out of the other rooster's neck. And, you know, you, you didn't need to see all of that. Yeah, but I think in, in uh, that, that was the shock value at the time. I mean, it was 1970. It was 1974. I don't think they had a lot of care, thought and care going into like, oh, is this going to be, uh, you know, uh, is this going to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know? A detriment to the movie. No, it's not. They don't care about the, you know, the, the chicken. It's just like, well, we need to show for the movie. I mean, you know, it's in the, it's in the script, right? It is, it is an exploitation movie, after all. I just right. It's very uncomfortable. But um, seven. But I'm, glad, well, yeah. but I'm sorry. I'm still glad I seen it. I'm still glad, oh. glad that, that oh, I, I've yeah. seen it because I I've heard about it for years. And when you mentioned it, I was just like, okay, okay, it's t- it's time. It's finally time to watch this fucker. Yeah, I recommend all you guys to watch it if you guys like genre exploitation films. Uh, this this is where it's at. It, it's 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 uh, well structured. It's um it gets you from point A to point B. It doesn't sugarcoat any of these characters if they're not fucking they, they got nice redeemable qualities except for the end like we mentioned, you know. But um even then you know he's gonna go right back to fucking cockfighting again, even though his 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 prized uh, rooster has passed away, you know. Well, like you said, he's got nine other roosters just ready and no, waiting. No, I he's mean, just uh, gonna. I mean, Harry Dean Stanton. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> He's going to go right back to hustle again, but right there, he is that moment of humanity that shined through. That, um, yeah, I, I, I recommend it. Like I said, go to Tubi and watch it. I doubt you can find a DVD anyway if one exists. I couldn't tell you for sure if it does. Um, yeah, Monty Hellman. You know, you get you get some applause right there, buddy. And I, uh, I enjoyed your film. And uh, I'm sure Lee would have been here with us tonight, but Lee it was unavailable. And I was supposed to test out some new equipment that I did not have. But, um... Lee's a fan of this movie, so I uh, he said, looking forward to hearing our review. And um, right on, right on. It's it's great to be back in the saddle again with you, for you folks. By the way, I, I we're gonna record Torchies tomorrow night and Cinema Beef Thursday night. This is a Tuesday night I'm in right now. If you if you can't speak days like me sometimes, <laughs> sometimes my brain's a day behind. But I'm right on the ball now, guys. Um, I'm over my holiday shit. So let's put it that way. But um, it's good to have you back, man. Cameron, you can hear him on our show last called Torchies. Anything under the cinema cinema degeneration banner. Go check out all those good shows. He's got about six of them on there or something. You know, I got like seven or eight. I don't even remember how many I got now. <laughs> he puts he puts them out there, man. He 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 loves genre film like I do and shit films like I do. And uh, this 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 is this is where friendship blooms right here. See, yeah. <laughs> When when you bond with another man over a movie called Cockfighter, man. Wait, we, we did, wait. One thing we didn't even mention. I got to mention this before we we go out the air. Oh, go ahead, the man. tagline for this movie is a fucking hoot. The tagline is he came into town with his cock in his hand, and when he what he did with it was illegal in forty nine states. Like what in the fuck? That that's a line for a movie that's a comedy, not a dark bleak drama like this. Well, you, if you don't have the poster to visualize, you can just think uh, the other way. He came in town like Louis C.K. with his cock in his hand. And, you know, <laughs> it's illegal in maybe 27 states, see? You know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's 1974. I'm going to leave that one alone, though, brothers. But uh, Yeah, me too, me too. This has been a, I'm not, not going to think about it any any, any longer. This has been a, a Cinema Beef bonus. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, remember, always here at the Cinema Beef Podcast, if you got beef, we've got the grinder. 
Oh, they're fucking saying that again. Goodbye, people.